Hey everybody, Danny Mod here. Thanks for joining us. How often do you pick out a fairway wood or a long iron and you are inconsistent? You top it along the ground, you hit the ground behind the golf ball, you lack distance on a regular basis. Well, this was a situation for a regular student of mine, Nigel, comes to see me with exactly those problems. Now, we finished the session and he was hitting it so much further, so much more consistently. I'll show you with you what we did. But what I'm most proud of and what he loved the most from this session was the fact that he now knew the feelings necessary to create consistency of strike. Because there's no point in you watching this video, hitting some beautiful strikes on a driving range, only to get out on the golf course and it not work. So what I want you to do, and this is what I'm gonna share with you in this video, is, is not just how you strike the long irons and your fairway woods, but the feelings that you can generate. What, what feelings, what's gonna be the difference between the good ones and the bad ones, so that when you're out there and you do it a few dodgy ones, you know exactly what to do to correct them. That's what I'm gonna share with you in this week's golf lesson. Now, before I do look, if you're new to the channel, it's been your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Just press that little bell button next to the subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video, just like this one. Plus, I always put a free practice practice plan in the description box below so you never have to remember a thing. Okay, great. So in this video, you're going to know by the end of this video exactly how to strike your fairways and long irons more consistently. But more importantly, you're going to know when you're out on that golf course, when it goes wrong, you're going to know the feelings you need to get it back back on, back, get the strike back if you start losing it. So we did this with Nigel in three very simple phases. The first phase was his backswing motion. The second phase was how he improved his strike. And the third phase we worked on how to naturally feel improvements in his direction. So the very first thing we did with Nigel was, was super simple. Like a lot of players, and you might be the same, when you struggle with something, you just start to stay still without realizing. Your legs start to stay still, your body starts to stay still, and you start to swing with just your arms. And that's what Nigel was doing. He'd swing back with his arms, chop down on the golf ball. I'm exaggerating hugely, by the way. And there's no power in that. The ball wouldn't go very high. It would go um, not, very, uh, not very far. So we needed to make sure he had a swing. If you want to strike a ball consistently, you need to have a coordinated swing where all of your body's working to move the club back and move the club through. The beauty when you do that it's also effortless as well. You know, Not only is it, is it coordinated, but you create a effortless motion, yeah? No matter your age or ability. So phase one was I got Nigel to do the move that I released in a video a couple of weeks ago, but I tweaked it slightly. I got him to turn and have a look over his trail shoulder. When you do that, when you actually force yourself to do that, when you look up and behind, notice how your body naturally has to move. Your ankles move, your knees move, your chest moves, your shoulders move. Yeah, it's, they naturally move into a great motion. You naturally also stay pretty centered as you do it. If you, you wouldn't do this, would you? If I try to look over here, my body's still, that just feels weird, right? You'll never do it, but when you look like this, perfect. So we got Nigel to do that, and then I got him to actually swing freely into this motion. So we'll get the golf club and turn his head up to the sky here. Clearly he feels like it's a lot of motion, a lot of movement, should I say. And it was for him, but look, am I moving off the ball? No, I'm not. Then once we did, I said, look, Look, your swing looks video good on camera now, but that's not what I'm interested in because a lot of swings can look good, but they might not actually act good. They might not actually be good when it comes to striking a golf ball. I'm not interested in that. I want you to be able now, once you've got that, and that's what I said to Nigel, how does that feel? Can you feel why in your body? Can you feel why that's really powerful? Why that's really useful? And he's like, I really feel like I've wound up. I really feel like I've got something now to deliver the, the club to the golf ball. I also feel, Danny, that it feels like I've got more time to hit the shot. I said, yeah, more time. Why is it? Because you're t you've got more movement, yeah? You've got more time. It feels effortless to swing through. When it's like this and you're already over the ball, it can feel snatchy, yeah? So now he had that relationship. It wasn't just turn and have a look. He now built a relationship with his body and the benefit of that to striking, he had something very concrete he could take. So when he did get short, he could go, oh, that feels short and quick. Ah, that feels better. And that's what, I want, that's what he felt. What I want you to do is to do the same and feel what you get out of it too. So I then got him to hit a few shots and I got him to look up to the sky, but very importantly now look, throw the club down to the ground because if you don't do that, you're not really playing golf. I'm letting the club swing up, fall down to the ground, up to the sky, 
fall down to roughly where you want to strike the golf ball. Start with that first. That's all we did with Nigel in phase number one. So imagine you're looking up to the sky here and then strike the ground. Backwards and forwards, okay? So super simple, no complications whatsoever. Immediately as he does this, he's thinking, God, it feels like a lot of movement, but clearly it's not. Why? You see it on the other. Am I moving around a bit? No, I'm not. I'm not moving all over the place. I'm staying, look, nice and centered. I'm just simply moving my body more freely, giving myself more time. I allowed him to just get a feel for this first. Let his body connect. I want you to do the same. Allow your body to connect with why this is so important. Feel the power. Once you've done that, we do doing Nigel, that already was amazing in terms of the, some of the distance he was hitting and the height was incredible. We then moved on to phase two, which was improving the consistency of his ball striking. Now his ball striking, what was happening was occasionally he would strike the ground behind the golf ball. And the reason being is if you imagine the club flowing like this, there's always a low point to this golf club. His low point was often behind the golf ball and he would start to catch the ball a little bit on the way up. This leads to a few tops as well, yeah? Which you top it on the ground, fat it sometimes, you name it. So I needed him to make sure that he struck the golf ball on the way down. So look, we're gonna catch the ball there in the arc, not there, all right? So the first thing I did was I noticed his ball position was way too far forward in his hands, miles forward. The ball's way too far forward, he's off his toe, you're gonna to catch it too late in the arc, yeah? So you're gonna catch it way too late in the arc here on the, way up, on the way up. So I just moved it back just inside between the middle of his stance and inside his heel, that's all we did. But secondly, we did this, super simple, and you can do this. I asked him, if you were playing a sport like tennis or hitting something, what would be the most powerful position? And I'm gonna ask you this now. Maybe comment in the comments box below and tell me why. What's most powerful here? Do I catch a ball there, there, or there? Is it A, B, or C? And tell me why. Can you see that? Now you know where this is. I'm sure and everyone's gonna get this right. There's a feeling when you strike, because look, I can feel my body's here behind the ball. I'm powerful there, there is where the power is. That's where power is, striking down. That's just a little bit too late. I'm just flicking it. That, I've caught the ball early. After when people are lunging at it, they catch the ball, oh, that's weak. That's some people catching it off the back foot. Just find where that is for you, yeah? You can do this, it's just a natural feeling. Just play around with it. The reason why we don't get it sometimes is because sometimes you've got a head full of so much stuff. You don't experience these things, but you do know where they are. So now you know you've got to strike down it. Where do you strike it? Do I strike it here? No, look, that's weak, I'm flicking it. It's there. That's where the ball is. Where's your relationship to that ball? The ball slightly look behind here. Not there, there. Does that make sense? Once you've got that sensation, it's all David and Nigel going to feel that motion and then see if he could feel where his powerful position was. And it's going to be different for you as it was for him. You explore these motions, yeah? And I've got a cool drill in a second how you could really enhance this. But So I'm going to feel now, watch this here. So look at that 2.2 look behind the golf ball. Look at my loss of distance. See that there? I hit the ground behind the golf ball. Now watch, 2.2B means 2.2 behind. Now watch this, I'm now gonna strike ahead of the golf ball and watch the difference. See, it picks it up. 1.4 after the golf ball, and I've now got a 250, 30 yard difference in carry. That is a difference in ball striking, right? Now the other thing you can do here, you'll notice, I'm naturally going into here. Grab yourself, go to a pet store, grab yourself a little squeaker, yeah? Put it under your trail heel. Now, for those of you who often top it or hang back here off your back foot trying to lift it, when you do it here, there's no squeak. Watch. When you get that pressure forward, make sure the squeak happens, then you swing. Squeak, swing. Great feedback. Great, and then look at this, squeak, fire. Not off the back foot. 
See the difference, yeah? Great feedback when I'm not around, just to get that compression that you need, yeah? Now, we did that, super, super simple. Ball striking is going unbelievably well now. We've now started to strike it. We had some fun. He said, Danny, why do I sometimes kind of fade the ball? Well, just jumping on Trackman here. Let's go into club path. And where we face, do, 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 do. Uh, club path and face. So just adding in club path and face to path, we just had, had a little bit of fun now. So what we did, we said, look, we want to kind of get you here. If you're slicing the golf ball sometimes, it just means that you're coming across the ball. So your club path is will be a minus number. It's coming left to target. So we want to get the path working over here. It's like, how do I do this? Well, look, move your body around. Start to get a sensation. You're going to wind it up. Look, when you look behind, now look further behind this way. And then where do you go? I still want to get this sensation look of a powerful position here. But now I'm going to get it and swing it over this way. So watch this here. So I'm now going to wind it up, get the path way over that. I'm really exaggerating. That's hugely exaggerated, actually. Bit of fun, but a bit of fun. Experience it, yeah? Getting curving it this way. The path look, positive number on track line means it's going this way. Minus number on face means the club face is close to the path and I'm moving it here. Then I got him to kind of think, okay, feel this motion. He's having fun now. Winding it up, feeling where power is, and then simply the power just moving across this way. So I'm aiming a little bit for me left to target now. Winding it up, winding it through, and I'm coming this way. This will get the ball curving this way. Look at the path, miles to the left, face open to the path, creating the bends. But look, distance is still okay, slightly left with a cut, but I'm moving, I'm creating these motions. What's the benefit? Well, somewhere and then in the vicinity of, between those two is the feeling of straight. And that's what I want you to have fun playing with. Feel where power is. Explore motions of wounding up. Feel where the strike is. Yeah, use a squeaker as an example of where you need to be or some feedback maybe. And then you know where strike is. You know that that's weak. You just lose these feelings sometimes because you're thinking sometimes too much. Yeah, then once you've got those things in play, just explore exiting where you're finishing. Exiting, swinging over this way. Exiting, swinging over this way. Explore those vicinities to find that happy ground so you can then start to not just strike it, not just generate a load of power, but play around with the spin so you get the direction too. Hope you enjoyed this as much as Nigel did. If you did, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one of your friends. And of course, look, there's a free download or practice guide in the description box below, so you never have to remember a thing. And if you're new to the channel, and this is one of your first videos of mine, consider subscribing. But until next week, have a great golfing week.